is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Sign Sealed Delivered. I'm yours. Hey, it's Panda, and I like Sign Sealed Delivered. I'm yours. I'm Dan. I despise this intro and Sign Sealed Delivered. I'm yours. <laughs> this is the Deck the Hallmark podcast. But I don't, that, you're supposed to wait. Yeah, you're right. I didn't hear it. Cakey. Yeah, he what is. Thanks. You're a big cake eater. No, I love cake. Deck the Hallmark is this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Uh, we all agree D2 is the best. D2 is the best. If anyone says another Mighty Ducks aside from D2, I, I, I'm not convinced that they are human. It's the best. It's the best. Mm. No quite no question. Loved it. It's knuckle puck time. It is knuckle puck time. Bash bros. Bash bros? Yeah. Come on. It's a no-brainer. Iceland. Iceland? Yep. Let's go shake their hands. Mm, it's classic. I mean, come on. Now, a third one. Yeah, they're at a college, and Gordon Bombay's not around. Yeah, until kind of he comes in, and, and he, you know. Comes in at the end. Comes in and gives a gives little. Gives him a rah-rah, yeah. which is weird. It's like, what was going on there in that movie? Did they not want, did Emilio Estevez just like, I'll do one scene? Like, I want to know how that He's happened. in it a few times, but it, it is weird. It's weird. Like It's, did weird. They, it's weird, but it still my, works for my me. Favorite, I'm still trying to figure out the mystery of that movie, which is Fulton uh, the dude who's the other bath, ba- Finster, who's the other bath, Finster, yeah, right? it's Finster. It's not, you know, not Fulton, the yes, guy who's yeah. not in the first one, but it's in this. Finster isn't in the third one. And then at the end, Dean Portman is his name, Portman. And at the end of the movie, he comes in reading his acceptance letter. That's right. Like he got, like it got lost in the mail <laughs> and he joins him for the last game. You can't do that. Doesn't like, matter. What, what happened there? We re looked over everything, and you've been accepted, and you can go and play hockey. I just, yeah. I just, what happened to Finster there? What that happened was, to Finster? That's what happened. That's our new podcast called What Happened to Finster? <laughs> what happened to Finster? I yeah. think you guys are going to need these jerseys. Mm. They're the new one. They're the old ones. Yeah. Classic. Oh, so that, good. I got chills. That's Hans. That's my Hans impression. Hans. I think you guys are going to need these jerseys. Mm. Classic. Do you guys want free hockey equipment? No one ever shops here, but just go for it. Classic Hans. Hans was a good guy. <laughs> um, all right. Sign seal. Okay, deliver. I've got to bring some. This, I know. We Look, um, one of our double deckers is currently having a baby and watching this while in labor. Wow. And I'm not making that up. Um, uh, Christina, this is the perfect distraction tonight as we are in labor and delivery waiting for our little one to arrive. Thanks for recording so much content tonight. Are you in the hospital? Um, or are you still yes. wait? Oh, you're not, I don't okay. know. I just know that uh, this is happening right now. So Christina um, has said the epidural is really doing its thing. Okay, in the hospital. We um, are, I've heard better on uh, with an epidural. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we all I know what you meant. I know true. what you meant. I, I heard better on epidural. I heard better? Um, <laughs> yeah, so we, we are, I heard better with an epidural. Yes. Yeah. We are, I heard better. <laughs> um, we're, we're doing our best here, Christina. Wow. So uh, we'll do the heavy lifting this evening. You just sit back and have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Good gracious. Um, I think it needs to be named Rig. That's all I'm saying. Wow. Christina. Rig or Trace. Yeah. Or somebody. Brand, Dan, Panda, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Deck. <laughs> deck. I, I'm deck. Why John you ask? President. Larry, President. Deck. Deck. Mm, present. Deck. Present. Present. <laughs> Don't ask. It's a podcast. Uh <laughs> A podcast. Wow. Who listens to those? It's 2038. <laughs> I don't know. It's He's t- 16. He's calling out roll still. Podcasts aren't a thing anymore. I don't know. 2038 is a lawless. In 2038, time. Little, right. uh, there's going to be these things called slurdles. Slurdles? Slurdles. I checked my slurdle of the day. Who are you? <laughs> 2038 man. I'm Tom Traveler. <laughs> You came back in time yeah. to tell me that you check your you check so, check your you need to tell me that Wordle, which is big in twenty twenty two, in sixteen years is going to be advanced enough to where people still play it, but it's called Slurdles. Slurdles. What is it like? What do you? Okay, you're. How is it any like? I made it sound 
like Schlurda was going to replace podcasts. Podcast. And you jumped in, Time Traveler Man, uh-huh. with <laughs> it replaces wor- Wordle. Yes. How, okay. Okay, Catch I'm going to give you a hint. Okay, right. okay. Because like a good Schlurdle. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 think of the number seven. There. <laughs> think of the number seven. Like a okay. good Schlurdle. Okay, got it. Uh, okay, and then uh, you, you multiply that by 12. Okay, but you're doing this too, uh-huh. right? No, uh-huh. Yeah, and I'm, then I'm uh, and then you find the word that's at the cross section. But of how is 84? that four? <laughs> you slurdled. <laughs> but how's that? He slurdled just the times tables. <laughs> <laughs> and how does it replace podcast? Think of the number seven times it by twelve. You slurdled. <laughs> God, this is our worst. I'm sorry, Christina. And how is it replacing podcasts? Well, that's all people listen to, apparently. What do you mean they listen to it? They listen to people solve the schlurdle of the day. This baby's never coming. 44 divided by 33. Well, that's a tougher one there. You (laughs) schlurdled. That was episode 12. Joe Rogan Show. Not that Joe. Ah, welcome to Joe Rogan Show. Not that Joe Rogan. I'm Rick Dilby here with my co-host Joe Rogan. It's Joe. Hey, what do you think about this? You know what's going on right now. <laughs> I can't believe it. You can't believe it. I can't it. believe it. Oh, the barks. It does bite. It bites. <laughs> it does it all. It, uh, can I ask you this yeah. question? Oh, right? you can. I heard somebody the other day say that Dr. Pepper Zero yeah. is the best of the of the zero calorie sodas. I'm a tab man myself. Uh, I'm a big tab cola drinker. I think it's got the right bite to it. Um, barks? You know, yeah, barks as well. Root yeah. beer. Root beer. <laughs> Are you trying to do an impression of me? <laughs> Don't. Uh, no, no, Joe, I was uh, right. I was visiting. I went live to our favorite comedian. You know it. We'll say it at the same time. One, two, three. Carrot Carl top. Schwartz. <laughs> It's Carrot Top. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not Carl Schwartz. It's Carrot Top. Now, his name is Carl Schwartz, which right. uh, we knows. didn't need to say that on the podcast. But uh, Everyone we knows. love prop comedy. Yes. I, and I think that goes without saying. Right. We so, saw him live we, in Vegas. Yes. Yeah, in Vegas, we saw him live for sure. Now, when he brought out the the uh, the, the, spa, the spam. Spam. The spam. What did you think he was going to say? <laughs> I, I thought he was, I thought he was going to say, it's not bacon. Spam you later. And he did. <laughs> he did. Joe Rogan show. Not that Joe, Joe Rogan. Uh, all right. Are you guys ready to dive into this one? Yeah. Born ready. Oh, uh, sign. saying we really should like this one. Really? Yeah. Who's saying that? All the postables. You always say like. Uh, you, Dude, you, the Twitter. I talk to postables every week on Twitter. You're so like in the know. I love the postables on Twitter. They're wonderful people. Yeah. They're so kind to me. This is a hope for the future. A hope and a future. Get a it hope. right, Jeremiah. <laughs> it's unnecessary. I told you not I'm to bring sorry. him up. I told you not to bring him up. A hope and a future. For I know. Um, it originally aired uh, on June 22nd, 2014. <laughs> Guys, I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, my naps, and my ribs for the time I spent with the Dick the Hallmark podcast talking about the year 2014. Yes, buddy. I'd like to thank Panda. Yep. Panda, you've been great. Thanks, Rip. I just love we eat ribs every Wednesday yep. morning. Every morning. <laughs> we been do a lot. Breakfast with Pandy. Yeah. Hey, Rippy, before you lose. Brian, I'm not done yet. Before you use all this, but go ahead. Go ahead. I'd like to thank Dan. Dan, you've been a rock during the trying time of Brian not giving me the naps. <laughs> Thanks, Rippy. I appreciate that. It's the least that I can do. Yeah. It was the least you could do, but you <laughs> did it at least. <laughs> and that's all my thank right. yous. Rippy. <laughs> Before you get too far into this, you know, <laughs> goodbye ceremony. Yeah. Um, Brent, I don't thank you for nothing. <laughs> we'll be back next week with the Christmas episode that came out in 2014. What? Yeah. It's one more, bud. Yeah. But you already said goodbye, so you, you, can't, you can't be here. I'm coming back. Nope. From the dead. Nope. You can't be here. I'm the Jesus of year, guys. <laughs> you, can't, you can't say that during Lent. We, we have what? made it's the no that clear. Zone. 
is no heresy zone for the next uh, how many more days we got a lot <laughs> <laughs> you expected him to know what day this was coming out yes yeah, and to somehow do math we're in a month we're within a month now. grand float me in that <laughs> don't have one buddy 14 uh and it went a little something like this the episode starts with a girl leaving a baby in a basket in front of a church with a letter before anyone opens the door, the letter blows away. People, you have to take better care of your important letters. <laughs> wind is a son of a gun. If there's one thing I've learned from this show is that wind's a son of a gun. Uh, before anyone opens the door, the letter blows away. The crew gets a letter, the letter, and explains that uh, this, this letter it's like in a special box of letters that don't have any information on it. Um, and it explains that the baby, his name is Joshua. Joshua has a heart issue. She is hoping that a pastor will be able to help. She can't afford to keep this baby. Hopefully he will be in good hands. They try to figure out how they can possibly find out how Joshua is doing now. <laughs> and it's at this point that Norman turns away and shares that he was in foster care himself. He was adopted by a family. He has never met his birth family, and did, but he did try not too long ago to find out. He got a letter in the mail from somebody, but he has not opened it yet. He decides that he would like Oliver to open it. So open it together. They discover that he has a grandma who would love to meet him, and it's Carol Burnett. Uh, Shane and Oliver go to the shelter and, um, I'm sorry, to the church and they find a pastor who says that he was a, the boy at the beginning who found this baby. He's all grown up now. So this was many, many years ago. I think he says 30 years ago. And, uh, but he has a card for the, uh, adoption agency he might be able to help. So they want to call, they will find out who, uh, Joshua is. So they go to show Joshua. Joshua Ish. <laughs> it's the, ish, Joshua. It's the, it's the follow-up of U2's best album. It, it's Joshua Ish. Joshua Ish. <laughs> it's all the tracks. It's all the B-sides. <laughs> like, hey, just go ahead and put out that Joshua Ish. <laughs> it sounds like... That's my uh, impression that of gonna, Edge so on the guitar. I was thinking that it was... <clears throat> Other songs. You're thinking it's versions of the songs on no, Joshua Tree. No. That's just how U2 sounds okay. all the time. Uh, U2's great. Love him. Um, so Joshua agrees to meet them so that he can read the letter for himself. He reads it and says, this, this letter means nothing to me. Uh, Carol Burnett immediately knows that Norman likes Rita. So he encourages him to make... <laughs> Gosh, man. Encourages him. Encourages him. Joshua Ish. Can you go get me some water? I can. I think that's the issue. You want to just take a hit of this? <clears throat> yeah. I ran, out, I ran out of apple juice, and I think that's... It's really sticking to the... I'm not going to have a single error the rest of this episode. All right, not with that Fiji water. It's, been un, it's never been touched by human hands. <laughs> Your dumb water, just people's grubby hands get rubbed All through. over it. But Fiji... Nobody. My water, water is the equivalent of <laughs> pre-pandemic Domino's. That's right. <laughs> pre-pandemic Domino's hands all over your pizza. Not since the pandemic. COVID came around. They said, guys, for the safety of our patrons, we have to stop touching the pizza. I know that goes against everything that we stand for. But we have to stop. <laughs> After it's cooked, no, no one more touching. <laughs> We can't do it anymore. If you advertise that, then you're the worst people. You're asking company. for it. You're asking for this bit. <laughs> They're what? playing Frisbee. Let's go. <laughs> hey, what if in our commercials we, we, assu <laughs> we assured the, the buying public that after we cook it, no, no one will touch the pie? Guys, with their hand. we're in a global <laughs> pandemic. Do you think it's necessary just so people continue to buy our pie to tell them we don't touch it? I think we have to. I think people <laughs> people are asking the question. People are wondering how what many are they hands doing have been with on my the pie. pie? Here's Chase and I got three hand pie. Good gracious. Where was I? 
I don't know, Joshua Ish. Oh, fish, fish, oh fish, Fiji fish. water. Got it. Uh, Carol Burnett immediately knows that Norman likes Rita and encourages him to make a move. So he gives her a gift to celebrate her win in the pageant. And it's, you know, a call back to the crab thing. Uh, Rita then realizes, thanks to her memory, that Joshua must be a twin because she saw someone coach a game of soccer or something. So they go to track down this twin and they track down the mom. The twin had no idea that he had a brother and the mom had no idea that Joshua was okay. Big news for everybody. Carol Burnett then has a heart attack and has to go to the hospital. And guess who is her doctor? The twin. George. It's Joshua. Ish. Uh, yes. So Joshua ends up being uh, her doctor, and she just starts m- doing stuff. She makes a few calls, convinces Joshua's brother to come to the hospital. The brothers meet for the first time. They talk. They get to know each other. And then the mom shows up, and Joshua hugs her, and everybody's happy. Norman has a fantastic heart-to-heart with Carol Burnett, and what more can he possibly ask for? We then see... If you recall, last episode, Oliver wrote a letter to his wife. He thought he was going to die in the vault. He was not going to die, but that's neither here nor there. He apparently has the letter. He, it's been a week now. What is he going to do with this letter? Well, seeing life happen in front of him at a hospital makes him decide now is the time to mail So he walks outside in a monsoon (laughs) and mails the letter to his wife as Shane watches on in the distance. And that, my friends, was signed, Signed, sealed, sealed, delivered. delivered. Hope Hope in the future. future. We did it. We did it, everybody. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll break this episode down with three segments and a fun thing. Postal Worker of the Week. Here on Take the Hallmark. Take the Hallmark. That's my I say that. You don't need this time. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking Science Seal Delivered, the final episode of the season. From henceforth, <laughs> we, we will have uh, movies. Double time. Double time. Double t- double time. I'm just so happy I get to hear you talk for at least another 20 minutes tonight. Oh I've God. been crushing it. Since I had that water, I have not fumbled. You've been crushing it. Yeah, I have not yeah. fumbled once. That's right. Just You're like fumbler. Just like just like Domino's post pandemic. That's right. No more hands on pieces. <laughs> no fumbles here. It's really tough. Can't fumble if you don't touch it. That's right. That's true. They're playing 40 chess. chess. 40 chess. That's right. Uh panel, let's kick it off with yeah. the hot take. Let's share your, your let's thoughts on this final episode of this season. Yeah. Of Science Out Delivered. So I'm kind of torn about this episode. A, I think it's really good because uh, Norman gets a backstory that I find interesting, compelling. Carol Burnett's in it. It's wonderful. She's great. Um, I think that they flesh out Norman in a way that is needed, uh, and they give him greater depth to that, and so I really appreciate that. Um, I don't think I'm a huge fan of this letter particular, the the twins being separated. I don't know if I buy that as much. Um, and yeah, I mean, but it's still a great, it's still a really solid episode. I, I think it's, it's not my favorite, but it's uh, in the upper quadrant of them. I think, I think you're looking for Escalon. 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 Well, I mean, quadrants um, divide them by four. So that's in the, the top upper t- three top t- Two and uh, a half. It'd have to be the third if it's upper echelon, if it's the top quadrant. <laughs> I'm thinking about it because there's 10 episodes. I don't know if I would have. I, I might have this. Third. Leave it to Dan to make quadrants. I might have this as sad. Three. three. Okay. So I might have this three. Oh, wow. Okay. The, upper, the upper third. Yeah. I, I would have this three or four. Okay. I think I would have that there. So, so better yeah. than last week's. Yes. Better than last week's. Okay. Um, I think I liked last week's episode more. I will say Carol Burnett's, I love her, so much fun. And I do think the Norman backstory, okay. hold on. Okay. A Norman backstory adds a lot. I didn't necessarily uh, care about this letter. And the Shane Shane walks outside, Shane Oliver walks outside in the rain and bails the letter. Uh, I think I liked last week's more. It felt like it uh, moved forward more. Um. And aside, if Carol Burnett was not in this, it would definitely be 
uh, last week's episode over this one. But Carol Burnett's fantastic. And so that's what makes it tricky for me. It's what? Got a, just 80 year old legend of improvisational comedy just crushing it on all cylinders. And you're like, give me the bottle episode. <laughs> but I, I, I just ball. said, a, uh, if it was not for her, it would definitely be that. That's but how you, good but she you is. Said, but you said you still prefer last week's over this week's. That's what you said. Yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> but as, I, what I'm saying is, aside from Carol Burnett, it definitely would have been last week's. Uh, right now, I'm, it's kind of it's, it's close. Okay. It's battling it out. That's cool. This is easily third for me. Wow. Okay. It's easily third for me. So upper master, quadrant. Mas, not quite. Upper third. Masterpiece is one. The 9-11 episode is two. This is three. Mm -hmm. And I think those three are cemented as the best three, mm -hmm. in my opinion, of the show. Um, and I, it's pretty easy why. One on the list is Carol Burnett. I mean, just an absolute legend mm -hmm. of improvisational comedy and just comedy in general. She's over 80 when they made this, and she crushes it. And she's so endearing and so charming. And, and so her and wonderful. Norman work well together. And you know what? Yep. It is the most far-fetched thing. Like, it's so far-fetched. It's absurd. The whole plot line of her is absurd. And it doesn't matter because she's so good. She's so, so good. Jeff Gustafson, and, and this is, the, the guy's a good actor. I've never said he wasn't. I've never cared about Norman. He crushes in this episode. I care about him more now. He gets to act a lot mm -hmm. alongside Carol Burnett, and which does doesn't great. hurt. Yep. And he has a great banter and rapport with her. Once again, storyline, she's a grandma, was in like New Delhi or Papua New Guinea or something, yeah. and just like, I, I don't know about all that, but it works for some reason because yep. it's these two. It really works. Um, it's a great place to leave this as if they're making another season with Oliver putting the letter in the mailbox in the rain with Shane seeing it. That really works. The adoption storyline um, is the worst part of this, which yeah. I think you said, and I would agree with that statement. I don't think that that does anything, but to be fair, the bank fault episode, that storyline of the letter itself wasn't mm -mm. very entertaining either. So, you know, it doesn't reach the caliber of those two episodes I mentioned, which have that combination of great character stuff and great letter, important letter. It doesn't have that, but it's the best version of the show without having a great letter. So it's three for me in the season, and this is the end of the season. So it would be three, third for me of the episodes. You, I, I'm going to do a hot statement. I think it's good for them. You're going to do a hot statement. Hot statement. <laughs> Guys, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it, everybody. Calm down in the back back there. Pipe down. Do Here it. it comes. Here it comes. Uh, I think it's good that the they are leaving oh. behind the TV show, and they're going to the movies. <laughs> Man, that is a hot statement. <laughs> that is one of the, the mildest statements I've I've ever heard you make. <clears throat> you did a hot one. <laughs> I'll say this. Uh, Danny sold me. I like this week more than last week. Hey. You sold me on it. This is why here we have a lot of fun here at the Hallmark. We, uh, uh, Carol Burnett with Norman. Come on, it's man. so good. It's good. so great. It's so good. Uh, yeah, and there and that whole relationship is better than anything from last week. And so I don't I, have a lot of weight. What? Mm -mm. I mean, I, I've got I like one. Mean. I got one too. That's it. I have one as well. Oh boy, it's gonna be a short night. Wow. Uh, Panna Rippy had a full eulogy <laughs> earlier. That was fun. <laughs> Panna feels. Uh, man. Uh, when she just kind of shares and, and Norman actually says, Hey, I, I, there's an interesting dynamic here. Norman having had the family and the upbringing he had where he was able to process through never really having a mom and then kind of learning about her and, and gaining an experience of that. He has kind of a really grounded view of his own mom where he helps his grandma process through the mm -hmm. loss of her daughter. There's a, interesting did we dynamic. establish that her, his mom is dead? Yes. I think that Do they she say dies it in this episode. They no, I guess they don't. I, it's heavily implied that she passed away because of uh, drug abuse or something, substance it's, abuse, it's, right? I, and I'd love for somebody to answer in the chat because it literally is probably my only weight what of the entire thing. Uh, maybe one other one is it's weird that she never said that. I, I assumed that she was dead, but I watched those scenes. Like, I, I don't remember her ever actually saying. 
That it felt heavily implied to me yeah. that she had passed. But yeah. you're right. I mean, it, without them directly saying it, they leave the door open. You're right. But I, I mean, I, I picked up that that was happening. I, I just thought that that dynamic was very interesting. Um, and so I, I got feels whenever Norman is uh, excited and him finally having the opportunity to meet his grandma and he's nervous about meeting her. And then, then when she actually goes in for her surgery and him hugging the doctor immediately after she's recovered, the, Norman bonds very quickly. And I think that that is such a Norman thing, but at the same time, just so genuine and heartfelt and great with his character development. So that entire plot, I don't know if I can pick one thing. I think all of that worked for me. Um, I, uh, don't buy that Oliver would have mailed that letter in such a uh, inopportune time as a monsoon. No way. All, uh, Oliver, who your wait, what right now? Yeah, it's, sorry. It's, we're no, in the, we're in all the feels. feels, all the feels. Hey, the, you want any other hit of the feed? This has touched my nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you because uh, that's a big time fumble, buddy. That's a fumble. That boy. is real bad. That's a fumble, boy, for sure. Big that's fumble, real bad, boy. buddy. You are tired. <laughs> So Daylight savings time makes fools. But of us wait, all. but wait, I'm doing actually pretty good. Yeah, because it feels earlier. We all should be doing better right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big loser. <laughs> Josh is. You're a big loser. Na 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 na. You're a big loser. Na 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 na. Meme. I mean, he's right, though. You're a big loser. <laughs> You're a big, big loser. Na 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 na. Everything that you said, Panda. Uh, yeah, I, it's the best part of the show. Why am I even giving it? Well, I impose Why am I else. giving a feels after what I did? I don't know. Why am I even bothering? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but everything Panda said is correct. Two moments from Jeff Gustafson as Norman in this episode really, really worked for me. Um, there's something about the fact that he has this letter and he won't open it, which now we have three of the four who have a letter. They won't open it. Oh, um, which is fun. We'll see if Rita has that happen at some point or another. But I think what I love is, is when he brings it out and Norman says, whenever you're ready, there's something about him saying, would you do the honors that really worked for me? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because uh, of just how Norman's character is and how much he reveres Oliver, but something about that really worked. But the moment for me um, was a fairly personal moment, but I, I, when Norman talks about how much like he he questions like why his mom would do this, and he says with just this like childlike gumption and confidence, he says, I had a foster dad who mm -hmm. said, you know what? That's not about you. Like that's not that's not about you. That's that shouldn't and 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 here's the thing is is kids in the foster care system, kids who are adopted, they need to hear that all the time mm. they, they don't need to hear it once they need to hear it all the time and so you know it's cool to see in a tv show norman got to hear it once and it changed his life and that's awesome but like it just is a moment that it just is it, it's it's something that i think is important and i really like it really worked it just worked all the way around i had legitimate feels about that mm. i was trying to figure out a way to <clears throat> go into the break by singing the you're a big loser uh <laughs> chant and that's hard to do after that. That it's that, tough. I brought that the room down. You're a big loser. Take a quick break. We'll be right back here. Dog. We're back, everybody. We're talking about science that delivered the season. Series finale, series finale, really. Finale, if you yes. want to get technical, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, can you imagine if they never made another one? Oh, and he puts that in the mailbox boy. in the pouring rain. Brutal. Man, that's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, but they do make more. They do. Yep. So that's, that's oh, it's good. We're good. Um, Panda. Yeah, I just can't believe Oliver would pick such an inopportune <laughs> time. I was hoping. I was hoping that you would do this bit. Thank you. Can't believe he would do that. To mail that letter? Are you kidding me? It's pouring out. It's a monsoon out there. It's brutal. That Brand, was, you got one? That was his one, too. That's just that's just pure checkmate. And the fact that you got to go, like, I was just praying in my soul. You heard my prayers. We were working together there. Yeah. So I think when Norman and Carol Burnett are having that. <laughs> Did you have another one? Uh, wait, what? Or yeah, I sure do. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it, it's it's 
yours is better. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mine was, why did the mine shaft car stop for so long as they're having a conversation? Boo! <laughs> Boo! Boo! To be, to be fair, they're very tough. Just slim pickings here. Like, yeah. mine is... <laughs> Like, do you have another one? Or is that all? <laughs> it's pouring down. The guy would not mail the most important. It's not that he mails it in the in the weather. It's that he takes it out of his pocket and holds it freeze frame <laughs> while it's monsooning on he him. Wrote it in pen. It's yeah, like, that bad boy is gonna be lost. It's gonna it's gonna be it's, coming right it's coming He's back. It's coming back. It's coming back, buddy. No. It's not gonna work out for you. They did that it was such a good way one, I blew it. It was a great way one. You deserve what you covered. You, you know why? You're a big loser. I'm a big loser. Da, 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 da. Mm, man. <laughs> can you, cl- can you do the thing where you clap over your head? Yeah. <laughs> You're a big loser. Na, 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 na. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> My only way what was that I just found it very hard to believe that this woman at the beginning of this movie when she's dropping off this infant child with a letter in the wind we can't keep doing this looking down upon him knowing she has another one like him at home i i that is that is not a a believable premise for a television program if you had the twins you would go to a look the thing about our healthcare system in the United States is it sucks, but you don't pay on the front end. You don't pay for the heart surgery on the front end. If he has heart problems, they're not going to let the child die if you no. don't have money. Right. They're going to take care of the kid's heart, and then you're going to pay. <clears throat> what you're saying by giving that kid away is, is that I can't deal with the debt. That's what you're saying. I, I couldn't. I never was ne- not angry at her. Like, it just was a... Fine. The twin plot line was bad in this. Yeah, it's bad. The it's rest stupid. of this episode is great. The twin plot line, and it's a stretch to get there. They knew what they wanted to do, and to make it to where one of these kids is adopted and one of them isn't it was the wrong way to go about it. The better way to go about it was that she gives them both up for adoption. One of them finds his mom. The other one never does because he doesn't like her. And then they come together and reconcile at the end. That's the way to do this. And instead, they didn't. They did this dumb thing, which was bad, and it bothered me. Yeah, but the debt. <laughs> Not worth it. Man, so much money. The debt. I mean, come on, it's just my child. Well, if you don't if you don't pay that debt, they actually take the baby from you on the back end. That's, oh, it's, uh, that's, that's the healthcare. Wow, man, yeah. that's worse than I thought it was. It's brutal out there. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, my thing is is it is just pouring down rain. He never would have done that. Yeah. I think it's what I'm trying to it's get. It's a monsoon. Yeah, so he never would have done it. Just poor yeah. timed. Poorly timed on my end. And by poorly timed, I mean just wrong segment <laughs> altogether. Uh, it's time for the Postal Service Worker of the Week. Yeah, we've got Danny Shanks Klein. Danny you Shanks. put Shanks in quotes. It says it here in the email that I got. Yep. Danny Shanks Klein. <laughs> yep, Danny Shanks Klein. <laughs> yeah. Can you read the email for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, dear Dan. Who's this from? Uh, this is from uh, Cheryl at postalworkerofteweek.net. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, wow. They're keeping tabs. They're keeping tabs. Wow. Cheryl sends me all of these. Um, I, we don't employ her, but she sends these. to How do you think I get them? I'm not doing the research. I thought somebody was not. People were nominating people. Mm. Uh, no. <laughs> Cheryl is. People are nominating through Cheryl, I think, and yeah. then I get them from Cheryl. So if somebody goes to Postal right. Service Worker of the Week dot net, you could get something to Cheryl. Probably fascinating. Maybe. Um, so anyway, uh, Danny Shanks Klein, Postal Service Worker 010101. It's binary. Uh, it's yeah. binary. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, is our Postal Service Worker of the Week. He's from uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Mm. Uh, Panda, take it away. Yeah, Danny Shanks uh, Klein, great guy. you got to say the whole name. You can just say uh, Shanks Klein, I think. Uh, After she puts it in quotes the first time, she calls him Shanks three or four times throughout oh, really? the email. Yeah, oh, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, okay, yeah. so Shanks. One of the things about old Shanks is uh, one of the top Scrabble players, uh, but he only uses Scrabble words from letters that he opens. What do you mean? So he opens letters that are meant to go in the mail and the only words he can use on the Scrabble board. Yeah, he has an ongoing Scrabble Scrabble game going on. And he can only use words that he reads, reads in, in letters, letters that he mm-hmm. opens up. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Wouldn't that be most of them though? <laughs> like, 
Does that hurt him? Like, does he does have that to that hurt him searching? or help? I honestly don't know if it would hurt it him. It could or not. help him, right? Well, I don't know. He has a weird bit where he only opens uh, telephone letters, like uh, for cell phone bills and stuff like that. Telephone letters. <laughs> yeah. Man, your age is catching up to you. <laughs> telephone letters? <laughs> telephone letters. You mean cell phone bills? Yeah, cell phone bills. Same um, thing. He only opens cell phones. Are we yeah, going to get it. to why he's called Shanks or not? Uh, I mean, he spent some time in prison. I don't know what you want. <laughs> for, well, it was weird because it was for uh, opening letters. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> and they gave him back his job. <laughs> he went back. That he promised wild. he would never do it again. Man. You got a clip of that promise? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll never open up that cell phone telephone bill again. <laughs> you promise? I swear my name's not Shanks. Hear he, hear he. So someone said, hear he, hear he, and banged a gavel on their leg. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know it's real, guys. Yeah. That's how you know it's real, folks. Exactly right. We did everybody. Congratulations. Another week in the books. <laughs> I'll be back next week with more. Until then, maybe the first of which you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Check the hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam Podcast Network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here at the studio. Feel free to listen. Feel free to turn it off, whatever you want to. But either way, Thanks so much for your support.